Okay, so officially welcome everyone. Welcome to the first cohort of Open Life Science. Um, as you know that we have already announced it on our webpage. We have also announced a little bit on our Twitter. So if you are willing to share about you or other people in the cohort, feel free to advertise the post or just talk about it for you. Um, so now we are in the week two. This is the first group cohort call. And the last week was about you meeting your mentors, getting to know each other. I understand that there were some assignments, but uh, we also understand that it's still very new. So we're gonna take today the time to learn about each other, what this program is and how we're gonna proceed for the next few weeks. So before we start, please be reminded that we have a code of conduct and a community participation guideline, which you can find by clicking on the page. Uh, you can see it on the, thanks for highlighting. Um, if you ever experience any sort of discomfort or anything which makes you feel excluded from the call or community, please, please feel free to reach out to Bernice, you and me. Um, if you have anything to report against either of us, please write, to other two or anybody. Uh, we're happy to hear anything, any comment or feedback you have about us, about the program or anybody else in the uh, program and cohort call. We have also given our email IDs, uh, so please take note of that. But you can reach out to three of us at the same time by emailing team at openlifesci.org. So today we will be saying hello to each other, introducing ourselves. Uh, in this call, you would see us talking a little bit, but we will try to keep it to a minimum. We'll have something called a breakout room, uh, which means that we will be able to group you and have you in a smaller group to have a bit more longer conversation so you get to know at least one or two people in your cohort in each call. So, we will be reviewing uh, what our communication, uh, com communication platforms are, what are the participation guidelines. We'll also define the word open leadership, what we mean by that, what it means for us and what it means to you. We'll also unpack the difference between open by default and open by design. Learn about common community interaction in open project and learn about common value exchange between community members in open science. Have anybody not heard from their mentor yet? Can you write on your chat? If at all you have not, please either uh, say hello, I haven't heard from my mentor in the chat, or you can write your name also in the notes and we'll try to arrange a meeting for you. Or privately, if that's any easier, you can just email us. That's a good point. Okay, so have everyone added their vision on the GitHub before this call started? We're not gonna judge you if you did not, but uh, for every call, we will have something like an assignment. It would be great if you can add them before the cohort call. If It would be even better if you can add them a few days before so other people in the cohort can also have a look at it and get, can comment. So if you are willing to get each other's feedback and you can promote all your assignments also in the Gitter channel so people can go to the link, look at what you have done. You can exchange your assignments with each other to gain inspiration. So before we go into everyone's introduction, I'm going to share my screen and have a brief introduction of this program, who we are, why we're doing this. Okay. All right, so because I can't see you, uh, you can put things in chat if you want to interrupt me at any time. Um, so if you wanna reach out to us, uh, you have our Twitter handle, OpenLifeSci, or you can see us on our website. So here we are, uh, these are three of us. So I'll actually ask Bernice and you to introduce themselves 
um, and then I'll go ahead. I'm Berenice, uh, I'm postdoc in, in Germany um, and I'm happy to be there and to have you in this program. Yo. Hey everyone, uh, so I'm Yo Yehudi, uh, I am a software engineer in Cambridge uh, and I am really, really excited to be working with you all um, for the next few months. Hi, so I am Malvi Kasharan, I'm a community manager this, until this week in Germany, but I'm moving to London next week. Um, and I'm also super excited to work on this. So again, three of us have worked for several months with really, really generous people in our mentor and expert group. And we're very excited that we are finally in a stage where we can welcome you into the program. Um, the idea that connected us was that we believe that to be effective, science should be shared openly with others and made freely available. And you are here with us and you're here because in some ways you also believe in the same idea. The Open Life Science program helps early stage researchers and potential academic leaders in becoming open science ambassadors. Um, and I assume that you all had read something about it before you applied for the program. And we're happy that you are willing to become that ambassador in your community. So it's, it's something that we know for decades, from probably from the beginning of science, that it can advance only when we share our work with others because other people can build on what you have done and you can work on someone else's work. But often we hear that researchers are skeptical to be open about their work. They don't want to share it because they have fear of getting scooped, being openly criticized, um, or or other people can spot mistakes in their own work. So how can we work openly without becoming scientifically vulnerable? It's a really complex question. Uh, it, the vulnerability is quite different for different people. And what we are trying to do is in this program, we want to explore what are the important concepts and practices in open science that we can apply in our work one step at a time without overwhelming others. So Open Life Science is a 15 week long personal mentorship and cohort based training. Uh, you would have cohort based calls like this one every second week and in between you will have one on one mentoring call with your mentor. And when you're not talking to either of us, you're going to have some hands on practices we will provide you with assignments. And after you have gone through assignment, you would be introduced to an idea and concept which you would be able to apply directly in your project. So we will be using Mozilla Open Leadership Framework, which, which you can access online openly uh, to fuel our open life science journey. So this, the whole idea of open leadership is that open leader design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. Um, so our open science definition goes beyond just sharing data, but it's also about bringing people in so you can do science together. The open leadership framework depends on design, build and empower principle in terms of understanding, sharing and participation. For example, are we designing our content for someone else's understanding? Are we building it for people to share in their network? Our, are we empowering people for their participation and inclusion in our community? Can we inspire their contribution? How can we help people to take care of themselves? How can we build resilience? So our science is not just about what we produce, but people who are doing it. So often we get asked, so what do we know about, what we think about open science, because everyone's open science is quite different. Open science mean, mean quite different things to different people. So it could mean that you want to share your data openly, or you want to share your code openly. You want to design hardwares, or you want to share your paper protocols. You want to also start sharing your results from early on before even it goes into printing. Um, and then we also have huge focus on uh, knowledge sharing and training and collaborating with people openly like citizen science that a lot of you are interested in, but also connecting others in our field and supporting them in scientific networks. So what we want to focus on from the beginning is the design thinking. How can we make our project open by design? 
2012 studies showed that tech companies um, that have level of strategic intent to openness and not just openness alone. So here the intention is important. It correlates with the market performance. So design openness into your work. Don't let it be a thoughtless default. So with that, we believe that you're already leaders in your own community and you come with a vision. And if you're gonna combine it with what we are trying to provide through our open life science program, you can definitely achieve positive culture change in your community. With that, I'll stop talking and happy to let Bernice take over. Yep. Thanks, Malvika. Um, now we will do, thanks for the introduction to the program. We will just uh, introduce yourself now. So we will do a lightning run to a table. So I will follow the roll call and I will ask you to give your name, uh, the location, so where you are located currently and your project name. Um, you, we, because we are quite a lot in the calls currently and we have only yeah, the time is running. We'll run really quickly. You will see. Uh, so please try to be brief and that we know at least we see each other. But yeah, you will have time later to connect and to discuss more. So Malvika, you and me, we already I introduced. Uh, so the next one is, I think, Cassandra. Cassandra, do you want to cast? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name's Cassandra, but Cassandra doesn't fit on the whole line. So I'm Cass. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'm at Oxford, I'm a postdoc here in neurosciences and I'm working on a project to change culture and develop policies so our wider departments can work openly and inclusively. Thanks a lot. Vicky? Oh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Vicky. I'm based in Cape Town at the University of Cape Town. I work for the Sickle Africa Data Coordinating Center. I coordinate that project. And I also have other community-based projects which really promote open science. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Olga? Olga, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. It's all right. Um, I'm Holger Enkel. I work in southern Germany um, at the research institute. I'm responsible for IT. I'm actually a mentor. So the project is Amrita that will be introduced by Anunia later. Great. Thanks. Aidan? Hi, uh, I'm Aidan. I'm also working in southern Germany in uh, Heidelberg. I work for, um, uh, yeah, my job these days is teaching and training uh, for leadership and management in research. And I'm mentoring Sudarshan in Nepal, so he will introduce the project. Thanks. Matus? Hello, uh, I'm Matus. Uh, I work at the University of Bergen in Norway and um, I'm working on the EDAM ontology and particularly in this project to extend it to further research communities. Thanks a lot. Iman, I think it's Iman Chu. I'm not sure if I pronounce, I'm, I'm really sorry if I mispronounce the names. So, hi everyone, I'm Iman Chu from uh, New Delhi, India. And uh, I'm in my third year of engineering and I'll be working on Intermine Similarity Finder tool and I'll be working under EO. And that's gonna be interesting. Thanks a lot. Christine? Hi, I'm Christine. I'm in Montreal, Canada at McGill University. And I work on open neuroinformatics platforms, specifically LORIS, which is the database for uh, researchers collecting all kinds of data. And I'm working on accessibility and adoptability of these open data platforms. Thanks a lot. Patricia? Uh, hi, I'm Patricia. I'm based in Edinburgh in the UK and um, I'm mentoring Lena on uh, th through this project who will introduce her, um, the details later. Thanks a lot. Sandy? It's me. Sandy, I think you are, you are muted. Yeah, oh, really? might be better. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, hi, I'm Sandy Quano. I'm in Washington, D.C. in the USA. I'm working on developing a kind of one-stop shop for 
uh, for uh, scientists to in incorporate more inclusive practices in their lab and to train others to do so as well. Thanks a lot. Festus? Hi, my name is Festus. I'm based in Nairobi and we are working on building a bioinformatics community in, within Kenya for networking and training for bioinformaticians within the region. Thanks a lot. And, ah, okay, uh, Elisenda. Hello, I'm Elisenda and I'm working at, in Besa Natal, Barcelona. And I, the project that I will do is uh, to try to create an open science community here in Barcelona to our knowledge and potential solutions. Thanks a lot. I think I still, my, Michael, I think. There. Hello, yeah, my name is Michael. I'm also in uh, Nairobi. I'm also working with Festus, the CME, trying to come up with the bioinformatics hub of Kenya. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Billy? Hi, I'm Billy. I'm in New York. I'm, a PhD. I'm getting my PhD in neuroscience at NYU, and I'm working on a Planoptic, which is a Python package for uh, visual neuroscience. Thanks a lot. Sudarshan? Um, um, yeah. yeah, hi, uh, my name is uh, Sudarshan JC. I am from Nepal and uh, I'm being uh, mentored by Aiden Berg. And I've just graduated uh, my uh, bachelor's in biotechnology. I have just completed my bachelor's in biotechnology, Nature of uh, Open Biology Initiative in Media, uh, Media Lab Nepal. And uh, my project is in democratizing bioinformatics tools to the developing uh, countries. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. David? Uh, yeah, I'm David LaBauer. I'm Director of Data Science at the University of Arizona, and my group is developing open software and data to advance agriculture. So we're learning how to build a community of users and contributors. Thanks a lot. Christina? Uh, hi, I work at the University of Arizona for David, um, but I live uh, in Florida on the east coast of the U.S. Um, and he just described our project. But yeah, we're trying to Im improve our documentation for our software and data so that people are more able to use it. Thanks for joining so early. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Emily? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm at the University of Arizona with Christina and David working on improving our documentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, Lillian, but I think Lillian cannot uh, I cannot uh, make the, uh, the yeah. yeah, I will type, I will re read what she typed. So is Lilian Juma based in Kenya, open science advocate working on platform that will connect open contributors and users in Kenya. Thanks Lilian. Uh, Samuel? Samuel, hey, I'm a PhD student in cognitive neuroscience at the University of Montreal, and I'm trying to establish an open science community at my university. Thanks a lot. Lena? Hi, uh, I'm Lena. I work at the Free University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and I'm trying to establish a um, network of data champions, or you can see it as ambassadors of open science. So in a way, it's similar to Samuel's and uh, Elisandro's project. Thanks a lot. Um, did I forget anyone? Hopefully not. I can okay. see Zoe waving. Uh, yes. Ah, so did I, I forgot you? Oh, sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> you were on the last line and I think I'm, uh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Chiara? No uh, I'm Chiara. I'm a scientific program manager at Columbia University. I'm based in New York City. Uh, I take care of community engagement and professional development programs for scientists. And my goal with this um, mentor mentee program is to establish a culture of open science at the Institute. Thanks a lot. And hi. Uh, hi, I'm Zoe. Ah, okay. So you are not in the roll call. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, I, I didn't, so your names were not in the roll call. So it's why I didn't ask you. So Zoe, can you go ahead? Uh, yeah, um, I'm Zoe and uh, I'm from Russia. I work in Moscow and I'm doing my PhD in bioinformatics. Uh, and I'm interested in benchmarking uh, bioinformatic tools. 
Okay. Can you add your names also in the in the notes, please? And I see two other people here. Uh, I think I don't know David Chen. Uh, I think. Yes. You're good. Yeah. Yes. So I'm David. Um, I'm a PhD student in virology in Osaka, Japan. So I will be working with Amrita project with Holger and Ananya. Okay. Probably haven't called Ananya yet. And and you. And did you introduce yourself also uh, in Yuna? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Ananya. I work with David and uh, Hoger is our mentor. We uh, I'm based in Bangkok, Thailand. We will be working on um, Amrita, a project for um, an online database for herbal medicine. Okay, thanks a lot. And so now everybody seems to be okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks everybody for introducing yourself. And now I will leave to you. Or you. Your okay. Turn. I will take myself off mute. Um, so we've had a very brief overview of um, just each other, but it was all in like one sentence or two sentences. Uh, so what we're going to do now is actually uh, breakout rooms. So I don't know, um, some of you may have used Zoom breakout rooms before. Uh, but not necessarily uh, everyone, so I'll just quickly give an idea about how they work. Um, so basically, it's just literally breaking up into much, much smaller groups uh, within a video chat. Um, and we'll be looking at a structured conversation about 10 minutes with roughly three people per room. Um, in the conversation about is we'll, there's three things. Um, so I've highlighted it in the notes just now so that you can see what the three tasks are. And the questions are, what was your path to this program? So why were you interested? Why did you apply um, for Open Life Science? Um, how did you get interested in, um, and how, maybe how did you start working openly? Um, and how has working openly affected your leadership? Um, and so with about three people per room, that'll mean roughly three minutes per person. Um, so what we will do, I think, Malvika, are you sorting out the rooms? Yep, okay, I've got nods. Um, so in a minute or two, we'll have a little pop-up on your screen. And it will take you to rooms with roughly three people per room. Um, and we will let you know when, we, when three minutes and then when six minutes has passed to switch to the next person. So each minute, each person gets roughly three minutes to speak, to talk about what you, what, why you're interested in this program. Um, can I have a show of thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on whether or not that was clear? I have so many thumbs up, I'm happy. Okay, the one last thing before we disappear is um, if you have any problems, you can ask for help. Zoom has an ask for help functionality. And I think that will call Melvika into your room and then she can talk with you about what needs to be done. Um, so if you are stuck at any point, just ask for help. We won't mind, that's fantastic. And with that, I think Melvika, are you ready? Oh, one minute, okay. Uh, any questions about what needs to be done while we're waiting? Oh, oh, breakout rooms are coming. Okay, click on join your breakout room. Go. Hey, Vicky, everything okay? Okay. <laughs> all right, if you, if you need any help, let us this dual magic. Okay, are we all back? Um, Ovika, can you tell if everyone's back? We are, okay, heads, uh, fantastic. So, um, as always happens with big group calls, we are very slightly behind, so we're gonna zoom straight on. Um, so if you have thoughts or feelings or things you'd like to share based on what um, we were talking about, please add them to the Google Doc. We can add many more bullet points. Bullet points are free. Um, and with that, uh, Malvika will talk a bit about setting up the project mission and vision. I'll pass over to you, Malvika. Yeah, so I just want to see some thumbs up on how many of you actually got through this exercise of having your mission, mission and vision written down. Yeah, was it, was it difficult? Was it fun to do? 
Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll just share from my own experience that we, we have a lot of ideas in our brain all the time and we feel like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. But the moment you sit down and write, it just, you, you realize that these ideas need to be summarized in four sentences maximum. And these four sentences do not have to complement each other. Um, so if you can go on the link from Mozilla um, Open Leadership Framework, you would have had your um, four questions, who you're working with, who you hope to work with, what you're doing, who are you doing it with, and why you're doing this. What is the impact and change that you hope to make? So what I'll ask you to do is um, take a few minutes for silent Google docking. That's T docking that you see. And um, take time to also read other people's vision and mission to give plus ones and give some thumbs up to them. So we're gonna be quiet for a few minutes here. So while you're doing, uh, while you're writing it down, I'm gonna also slowly send you to the breakout room so you can start discussing your vision and mission with people. I'm gonna do a very lousy job this time to find uh, different people in each room, but we'll try for the next time. Just quickly checking. Um... What size breakout rooms and what's the topic? Um, sorry, we're going we're gonna to have three people in each breakout rooms and uh, they will be sharing each other's, they will be sharing their own mission, mission and vision with each other and discuss about uh, the whole practice and also learn about each other's project. Yeah, we're recording, you know. All right. You're right. <laughs> Vicka, let me know when everyone's back. Or are you going to wrap up? Yeah. Oh, you wrap up and then pass on to me. Sorry. You're muted. Sir. So, okay. I hope you had some really nice discussions with each other. Um, and I hope you will continue discussing this on the Gitter channel. We'll try to make mailing lists where you can also go on doing it. We won't have time for questions right now. Um, but please do write it down on Google Doc and please go through other uh, notes as well so that can inspire your own idea of your project. So that's the wrap up uh, you, you can take. Okay. Well, I think it's a whole skill I need a certificate in just muting and unmuting appropriately, but I am now off mute. Uh, right, so next thing we're going to be talking about is the open canvas. Uh, I need to go away notification, right? So I can click on this thing. All right. Okay. So I'm going to try sharing my screen. And let's see how this goes. Share. I want to share this. I think. Share. Can you see my screen? Brilliant. Okay. And let's get on the right slide. Okay, right. So what we're gonna be talking about um, is the open canvas. And you say, what is an open canvas? Well, I'm here to tell you. So uh, it is a short exercise that we'll be asking you to look at after this call. Um, it's basically a bunch of boxes to fill out, uh, literally a box checking exercise, but I, it's one that is actually really quite useful. It's uh, in terms of, um, if we were gonna keep on going back to some of the same sentences about how open uh, project leaders behave, 
And in this case, we're thinking about designing. So open leaders design and build projects that empower others to collaborate in an inclusive community. Um, and what I mean by this, um, if you remember the framework, the open leadership framework that Malvika referenced in one of our earlier um, presentations. So we're specifically looking at when we are thinking about our projects, how do we design our project in a way that is um, good for understanding so people can understand what's going on and so that people can interact with you effectively. Uh, we're designing our project in a way that helps us to share things with people. Uh, whether that be gifting some knowledge or um, some ideas or some software or hardware or whatever it may be that you are sharing with people. Um, and we're also looking at designing in ways that allow people to participate. Um, by the way, uh, when I share my screen, you can't see the Zoom window in front of it, can you? You can't see like a little video window. Uh, no? Yes? No? I don't know. Okay, excellent, right, because it's blocking half the screen. I didn't want it to be visible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, and the final thing about the Open Canvas, uh, it, it helps us write down and um, specify our ideas in ways that make it easy for people to participate and to feel included in part of the community. Um, so uh, if I move on to my next screen, is that too far? There we go. Right, the, so this is what an Open Canvas is. Uh, and so basically, um, it is adapted from the Lean Canvas. So if anyone's read, I think, the Lean Startup, uh, uh, it has some ideas about filling out these boxes, writing down what exactly it is that you've been thinking about in your project in terms of who contributes, how they contribute, and so on. But I'll drill down into this a little bit more in detail. Uh, yeah, <sighs> keep on going to me slides. Okay, right. So... If you see um, on the bottom left, there is information about the project execution and the idea is that you sort of work through step by step. So you talk about who your contributors are, um, what they look like, um, what your user profiles may be. So who are you building your project for? You move along a bit further. How do these people uh, contribute, contributor channels? Um, so if you say, I'm thinking about who is going to be participating in my project, um, so they need to know, is this going to be within GitHub? Is it going to be some other sort of platform that I use? Um, and you give information like the unique value proposition. So why is the thing that I'm doing interesting to other people? Uh, I'm sort of hopping around here. I apologize. I'm going to hop over back further, let's say, to the problem as well. So what are we solving here? Um, and if so, once we've stated what the problem is, what is the solution that going to prove be providing to this problem. Um, and apologies for hopping around a little bit. Uh, uh, I will move on to the next slide. So we'll walk through this in a bit more clear detail. First of all, um, on the left, we have information about the product. Uh, so this is sort of tech oriented. So what you may be providing may not necessarily be a product. It may be a service or a protocol or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's a thing that you'll be sharing with other people. Um, and then on the other side of that, the community is the people who are going to be using and who are going to be contributing to your product. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, define your problem. So what is it that you are trying to solve? Um, and so hopefully perhaps with the vision and mission statement that you've been working on, you've been thinking about what this problem is. Uh, for us, for example, if I were to do this for open life science, the problem is science isn't always as open as I would like it to be. And then next of all, the solution in our case will be this program. Um, I don't think it's going to solve science entirely, <laughs> um, but I think definitely it helps to create more people who are able to work on sharing projects together. Um, moving along a bit further, how will we measure this? Um, so again, thinking through the example of the Open Life Science program, our metrics might be how many people have we trained, how many people, if we run a second round, how many people then go on to be mentors later on. So you might want to think about what metrics you can apply to your project. How would I measure whether or not my project is actually being successful in some way? Um, and then you think, okay, so I've got my big idea. How do I go and create it? You know, who do I need to speak to? Um, do I need to have computer resources? Do I need to have a lab? And so depending on your project, there may be different things that you need to start to get towards working that project. It may be networking connections, for example. And I mean, networking connections in the making friends with people and definitely not in the cabling uh, sense of things. <laughs> um, so then uh, continuing on, uh, think about who's contributing. 
uh, and what would an ideal contributor look like? Um, that's not physically, but in terms of their personalities, their behaviors. So I might say that a contributor to open life science is a mentor or an expert who can share their knowledge. Uh, another type of contributor would also be the participants. You, uh, without this, without you, we wouldn't be going anywhere. Um, and then I say, oops, okay, this is an overview slide. <laughs> Sorry. So contributor profiles should fulfill the, just run my window, covering things, should fulfill the needs required to build your product. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So basically the people who are contributing should be the people who can help you get those resources. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, user profiles. So this is slightly different from your contributor profiles. So for example, I suppose in this scenario, um, the participants for Open Life Science might also be the users, or we might say that our users are people who um, then learn about open science in the future from you. Um, so think about who the target audience for your project is, and especially who the early adopters are. So if you had success, if you said my project is being openly shared with someone, who would that person be? Try and define that. Um, and contributor channels. Uh, next question. How do people actually come to you? How do they contribute? Uh, so in our case, uh, I, we haven't actually surveyed you, but my guess would be a lot of you heard of us through Twitter. Some of you might have heard of us through mailing networks. Um, uh, I know we did some talks. We did our webinar. So those would be the contributor channels for open life science. And try and think about how you might gain new contributors for um, your channels uh, for your project as well. And then finally, the channels for users. So how will you gain new users? So that might be the same way that you gain new contributors, or it might be a different way. Maybe you're doing a training workshop. Um, try and think through these exercises. And I know certainly when I did a lot of this personally, I felt like, okay, I'm filling this out, but it feels like I'm just being made to fill out a silly form. But then afterwards, having filled out and thought about um, how I'm going to uh, fill all of these out, I realized I thought very critically about my project. And it made me think and define it in ways that previously I might not have effectively done. Uh, and there's a chat message. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Himanshu forgot your laptop cable. Oh no, okay. Well, um, good luck, Himanshu. Hopefully you can find your power cable. <laughs> um, okay. Um, where was I on my slides? <clears throat> oh yeah, okay. So community engagement is talking about the channels, user channels and contributor channels. And finally, we have our unique uh, value proposition. So this is saying, having thought about who's contributing, how they're contributing, what resources I need, and what my problems are, what is the unique value? What am I offering to the world that is useful and interesting? Uh, and I like it here, what you offer and why you are different. I think that's a really good way of thinking about that. Um, and then we have a small example here. Um, this is for a Mozilla project called Contrib Contributor Badgers for Science. I think the project ended up being called Paper Badger. Um, and so it sort of gives you a bit of an idea about how they thought through the problems um, and then added them in themselves. So saying there's a lack of recognition of certain contribution types and academic papers and that people weren't taking advantage of the work of the medium and then just sort of thinks through different ways to solve that, to measure that, basically by, by providing badges uh, when people author papers based on their contribution. So someone worked on the software, someone did the editing, someone wrote the words, someone did the lab protocols and so on. Um, so that's a really good example. I won't go through all of it now, um, but the slides are available and linked to from the agenda so you can review it yourselves. And I think that also the demo is in our notes as well. Um, and oh, that, is that my last slide? No, okay, nearly my last slide. Right, so if you want, uh, this is the link where you can actually go and um, access an open canvas for yourself. So make a copy of the document and then um, try and see if you can think through. And it's okay if you don't fill every single box. Maybe if you can't find any boxes, discuss that with a mentor and they can help you think through with the bits that you're missing. Um, but I definitely find it as a useful exercise to think about things. And so thinking back to um, what we've been doing, we're trying to empower um, researchers and academic leaders to become open science ambassadors. And hopefully this will help you design and structure some of your plans for further on. And I think that's everything. Yay, I had a clap there. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna unshare my screen. Um, okay, I hope that wasn't too rambling. Um, and the screen is unshared. Who's up next? It's me. 
Brilliant. Questions and comments, but you can type them directly in the Google Doc if you have questions for you. And we can, if we have a bit of time after my presentation, we can go through the questions. Is it okay for you, Yo? We do this way? Sounds good. So, good. Uh, I will talk now a bit about road mapping for open project. And I will share my screen again. And sorry, just. Ah, wrong one. Yep. Yep. Can you see my screen? Sounds good. Okay. So I will talk now about road mapping for open project. And oops, wrong one. So what we will do is what we, we will um, see how we can use a roadmap to plan your work and contribution for a project, for, for your project, for your open project, and look at some examples. And uh, during at the end of the course, we will give you an assignment to create or revise your your roadmap for your project. But I will first uh, introduce you to the roadmap. Um, so same as you mentioned, so it's the same introduction to open leader design and build project that empower others to collaborate. And I will talk a bit now about the collaboration part and how the roadmap can help you to empower others to collaborate within com inclusive communities to your project. Um, Again, these nice tables of designing, building, empowering, and for understanding, sharing, and participation. And uh, now with the roadmap, we will focus on this, uh, the part on the top, right? Uh, participation and inclusion. So how you design your project to help participation and inclusion. So the idea is to, to develop a welcoming space that make a good first impression that you, you or new contributors are in the right place to contribute, that they feel welcome and that they can be, they can get involved in one project. But for that, you, let, you need to let them know what's going on, what's happening, what, uh, what is the current statue of a project, what you, what you as a leader of a project, you want to, what is your vision? So you already write your visions, but you can detail it a bit more with the roadmap. Up. And so a roadmap will be a summary of a project welcoming people to contribute, welcoming people, um, how they can get involved, and usually you have a timeline. So it's the three main, main uh, parts in the roadmap, these three parts. So the first part, the project summary and welcome, um, will make people, you know, welcome people, orient people to your, to your project. So usually there has been linked to your own map directly, so they never, maybe never heard about your project, they, they went directly to your own map. So it's important to help them understanding where they are, what is your project, what is it about, what is your visions, um, that they, they understand, they have a vision, they have a big idea about the project. And to give them a clear focus, it's also help you to give a focus when writing the rest of the roadmap, if you already wrote, uh, write the visions. So the project summary first is the first thing that you will have in your roadmap. And then the second step is how to get involved. So some new contributors may want to just jump right away, they want to contribute directly, but so then you need to point them where, how, to some documentations, to how they can contribute. Maybe you have some um, easy to contribute uh, issues or something. It's important to do that in your, in your, in your roadmap. You, you need to do that to, to tell them how they can get involved. And point them to important part, to the different part of your project. The third part and the more, the more important part of your roadmap will be the timeline. So you need to organize tasks to complete your project around different milestones. And that it will map uh, what you are working on and what is going next. So what is your currently task that you need to achieve and what is your visions 
maybe on short terms, the mid terms and long terms. And in fact, so you define different milestones that can be turning points, significant turning points or events that will move your, your project forward. It can be statues. So for example, you have a feature release plan, you have a minimal, uh, a minimal uh, viable product that you want to release. It can be also an event. So for example, you organize the hackathon and you have different milestones. You want to do achieve these things before the hackathon or during the hackathon. Or you have a deadline for submission of a paper somewhere or for a conference, for example, and you want to achieve things before. It can be, it's also a time frame. So as I mentioned, oh, there is a mistakes in the, <laughs> um, the slide so time frame the short time the short terms medium terms and long terms um, a, a frame for your project um so it's important to when you write your your to have to pick one to three milestones for your timeline and then once you have them you can uh, list some tasks to complete for each of the milestones that will include information to, make, to help people to contribute, to know what has to be done, uh, what will be a successful, what will be a success for this task, how it should look like, how you can get started. So maybe point to some documentation or some part of your code to, to say, okay, how can I do that? And why this task is important. So on that to make sure that you relate that to your vision. Um, and the question is how you can share now this roadmap, how you store your roadmap. Um, we were discussing quickly with Malvika and you to, uh, in the beginning of the calls uh, that um, it's moving quite, it's changing a lot. So the way you can do it is before, I would say, and until recently it was you have a separate file called roadmap.md. And if you go to this uh, link there, open discovery, I don't know if I, oh, I can, open. do you see my screen if I open it? Nope. Stay your slides. Okay, sorry. So you can go through the links later, but you can store in a roadmap file.md, for example, in, if you have a Google, uh, GitHub uh, repository where you store this roadmap that the people can find later. You can also put that in the readme file, but I must admit that I didn't find a good example, recent example, up-to-date example of a readme file with a roadmap inside. Because my, nowadays I would say most of the people use an issue, so you have an issue to, to, with a roadmap, for example, for the open life science applications. So uh, I think it was, yeah, when we, uh, so in, for the last uh, trimester, so we had this roadmap, uh, what we need to do for the applications for, our program here, and we wrote a roadmap for that. But also, if you're using GitHub to, to, for your project, you have these nice uh, project tabs in GitHub, and that is, you can see in the top of, your, uh, of the project, which is really nice to organize your roadmap there. Uh, for example, the Galaxy project, um, they use that, and it's quite powerful because you can really move things forward, and, that, and it's totally open so people can see it. Um, but then you need to be sure that your vision and things are clear before. Um, and I was, it was just a global overview of what is a roadmap. I will recommend you to go through the different, um, the different examples that I show you because they are, they are quite okay, quite nice. Um, and to, to try to draft your roadmap for your project. It doesn't have to be a final one. It's just, a first version of your of your roadmap and it will help you to 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 know what you want to do and which steps you want to achieve and also the timing for that and yeah welcoming new contributors and on that i would like to thank you for listening for that and to that and yeah again sharing the same idea of our programs and yep yeah, thank you And if you have any question, please type them in the in the document, and we will answer them. Either, yeah. Do we have we have a bit of time? No, we are a bit out of time already. So type them. 
yeah, the slides are available. So if you go on the on the on the in the document, uh, you can click on slide and you see the slide there. You should be. Able to. If not, let me know. Then. Yep, good. And uh, can roadmap change through the project lifetime? Yeah, sure. The project, the roadmap should uh, should be updated. So one thing you can put, for example, in the first example with the separate uh, file, the, the the separate file, you see that they they mention when the last time it has been updated. So in the, for the open discovery things, they tell you. So it's nice if you have a. a, a a dedicated file to put when it has been updated for the last time that the people know what does that mean when how up updated the roadmap is but say yes I, I, it should be it, it should uh, change with your with the project and it's it's easier for example if you the project tabs in github then you can really see how it it's go so you, once you have a task that is finished you can move it to done or something any other questions i think malvika you can go okay so as you can see that we don't have a lot of time for you to talk to the entire cohort. We always have a lot to uh, share with you. So we have an exercise for you to talk to each other on Gitter. So after this call, whenever you have time in the next two weeks, uh, suggest some names for this cohort, which is fun. Now that you know mission and vision statement from others, you can come up with some idea. Uh, you can place them here or you can place them on Gitter and people can start voting and choose one name for the next cohort call, which we will continue keeping for the rest of the cohort. Uh, make it fun, make it really out of the box, that whatever you feel like calling yourself as a group. And then we will have a few assignments for you. Uh, one is called compare and contrast assignment. If you click and open that, you will um, see there's a principle called POP, Purpose Outcome Process. Um, you would be able to compare what you have and what you want to have. Um, and this is a very nice exercise for you to learn about your own community and where you wanna go with your project. Other task is um, that people have slowly started to put and share their own vision mission on the GitHub. So please go through some of the statements, give feedback to them and invite them to get, get, give you some feedback. So this will really help you to refine your own idea of the project outcome. Now that you have mentioned what open canvas is, you will have opportunity to do your own open canvas. I totally agree with her. It was, it seemed like a bizarre thing to do when I did for the first time, but when I started to talk about it with people, it just made so much sense. So just don't look at your own canvas, look at other people canvas. Um, if you want, and you can share it on Gitter again. You can give a link of your canvas to others and people can have a link or you can just uh, screenshot your canvas and put it on Gitter. Um, and once you start looking at three or four different canvas, you will start understanding and refining your own canvas. And these canvas are again, uh, gonna give a clarity of how you can envision your project going forward. Besides sharing on Gitter, please share it on GitHub issues so your mentor can look at it before your next mentor mentee call. And now Bernice has also mentioned what roadmap is. Please start thinking about your own roadmap and uh, start writing them up. It doesn't have to be finished within a week or two. As Bernice was saying, this keeps on evolving. So there is no pressure that you have everything perfect right now. Um, I think everybody has joined the Gitter channel. Uh, it's an open channel, so obviously you can join, but if you think that someone else wants, wants to be part of discussion, they're also welcome. Um, before I talk about the Google Calendar, uh, I want to ask if this call is, if this time is okay for everybody, or is there certain tweak that we need to do? Because we would like to continue having the call every two weeks. Yeah, no, can I, sorry. It, 
Yeah, yeah, the court calls will be one week in uh, at this time, one time at two, and the next time at 7 p.m. Okay. Sorry. I Yeah, it's just to be sure that US people can, it will be easy. So we will alternate between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. To, to make it easier for, for people to join, if it's okay for you. Okay, so then we can directly go on Google Calendar where we where we will update the dates and times for all the cohort calls. They, they are all listed, so they should be there. Perfect. So these are really efficient people I work with. This is uh, really great. So if you click on it, you will see, um, th you can add this calendar directly to your own Google Calendar, uh, or you can create um, these events on your calendar. I will also aim to send you all a Google Calendar invite if that makes it easier for you to make sure it's on the calendar. But we just wanted to give you a heads up before we start blasting you with all the calendar requests. Um, we still have a few minutes. So before we forget, we have uh, next week, which would be your mentor call. Please make sure that your assignments are almost done and you can get some feedback from your mentor and then you can uh, work on it. Thanks for joining, Kiara. We'll see you next time. Um, and everyone, please give us feedback. As you know, we're running it for the first time. Uh, please write down already what worked for you in the call, what did not work in the call, what would you like to change for the next calls, and what really surprised you pleasantly, unpleasantly, or otherwise. And we're going to still hang out for another five minutes. Uh, if you have to leave, it's totally all right. It's been one and a half hours. But if you want to hang out and ask a couple of questions, we are here for you. So again, thank you for joining us. Thank you.